Is Black Lives Matter um, a kind, considerate, anti-racist, politically impartial organisation established in order to counter police brutality, which is how it's portrayed by all our politicians and journalists, or is it an anti-Western, anti-family, white-hating, anti-capitalist, anti-freedom, anti-democracy, a narco-communist organisation hell-bent on inflicting upon us an Orwellian cultural and racial supremacy historically only made possible by total defeat after a full-blown war. An investigative journalist could quickly and easily spend a few hours uh, doing some basic research in order to establish which of these two entities Black Lives Matter actually is. Uh, which is important considering how we are cravenly submitting to their demands. But our journalists are not really journalists anymore, are they? Most are intellectually and morally bankrupt political activists of a leftist bent, so they will never reveal the truth, even if they had the slightest interest in establishing the truth, which, needless to say, they don't. So I've done the research for them. And it's not good. It's really not good at all. My first port of call was a Guardian journal, a Guardian article from 2018, in which uh, Patrice Khan Cullors, one of the three female Black Lives Matter founders, uh, was asked in a somewhat semi-literate fashion that if she could go back in time, where would she go? And her reply was to when Huey Newton started the Black Panther Party. Well, that's interesting, although apparently not to the toy town revolutionary Guardian journalist. The Black Panther Party was not exactly a peaceful organisation by any stretch of the imagination, and not really an organisation to which any decent, anti-racist, peaceful, humane person could possibly admit to admiring. I'm not going to risk my uh, YouTube channel by detailing the horrific exploits of the Black Panthers and its high command, uh, comprised of Huey Newton, Bobby Seale and Eldridge Cleaver, uh, but I will link to a series of articles about them in the area below this video. Uh, suffice to say, though, they were not pleasant people, and the events centred around them uh, consist of raping white women as an insurrection, insurrectionary act, as Cleaver put it, uh, the ambushing and murder of a white policeman, uh, the murder of a black prostitute, the torture via boiling water of a black panther they suspected might be a police informer, the terror campaigns against those testifying against them in court, the possible rape and definite torture and murder of their female accountant, the murder and mutilation of a fellow Black Panther uh, suspected of having an affair with Bobby Seale's wife, and multiple instances of skipping bail when indicted for some of these crimes and seeking refuge in hardline communist countries, uh, the ideology of which they clearly liked despite being responsible for the leftist-inspired political murder of over a hundred million people in the 20th century. So all in all, not the sort of people to revere, one would have thought, but the reverence extended to the Black Panthers by the leadership of Black Lives Matter is so extreme that the Black Lives Matter 10-point plan uh, was essentially lifted word for word in many instances from the Black Panthers 10-point plan. I have to say I have some sympathy for blacks in 1960s and 1970s America and some of the Black Panthers points were valid back then but this is no longer the 1960s and to resurrect today the very real racial issues of those times is being done only in order to create racial division and anger. And I won't detail the similarities of the two groups' 10-point plans here, it would take too long, uh, and will instead link to them beneath this video. Uh, what I will read out, though, is a quote from Black Panther leader Eldridge Cleaver, 
uh, taken from his 1968 book Soul on Ice. Quote, when I considered myself ready enough, I crossed the tracks and sought out white prey. I did this consciously, deliberately, willfully, methodically. Rape was an insurrectionary act. It delighted me that I was defying and trampling upon the white man's law, upon his system of values, and that I was defiling his women. I felt I was getting revenge from the sight of the act of rape, consternation spread outwardly in concentric circles. I wanted to send waves of consternation through the white race." Uh, end quote. This hatred of whites is hardly surprising given the Black Panther's admiration of Malcolm X, who stated the white man was the devil. Uh, but I ask again, how, how is it possible that Black Lives Matter can openly admire and respect these wicked, murderous and racist men. Imagine if a white political group had behaved like this in the 60s and 70s and were openly admired by a modern day white organisation masquerading as a human rights group. Our present day elite would quite rightly ban them as a wickedly racist terror group. But when it comes to Black Lives Matter, all we hear is gushing praise and sympathy. This is this is simply beyond reason, beyond sanity, beyond evil. The leadership of Black Lives Matter, uh, quite apart from exhibiting what would appear to be a modicum of distaste for white people, uh, also extends to a loathing of pretty much everything the Communist Party loathed, uh, albeit with the added impetus of hardline feminism and other such modern delights. Uh, Black Lives Matter founder Alicia Garza uh, thoughtfully provided a sympathetic forward uh, to a book entitled Revolution in the Air, 60s Radicals Turned to Lenin, Shea and Mao, who combined, as I said earlier, to murder tens of millions of people. Uh, does the mass murder of those she deems the oppressor bother Ms Garza? Not a jot, it would seem, and we need to bear in mind here that we too are the oppressor in the eyes of the fragrant Ms Gaza uh, by dint of our skin tone. Not a pleasant thought at all. Uh, Black Lives Matter, then, would appear to be revolutionary communist to boot, a, a, a matter easily argued. Uh, when one looks at their own words on their GoFundMe site, which has already raised close to a million quids. Uh, quote, we're guided by a commitment to dismantle imperialism, capitalism, uh, white supremacy, patriarchy, and the state structures that disproportionately harm black people in Britain and around the world, end quote. Uh, which I take to mean smash the Christian capitalist West and quite possibly all the white people within it. You know, at least if Stalin had invaded the West, he would only have murdered the bourgeoisie oppressor rather than all oppressors deemed oppressors simply because of the colour of their skin, uh, regardless of calloused hands or not. If our witless teenage journalists were um, actually aware of all this, would they still treat Black Lives Matter so sympathetically? And unfortunately, I think they would, and intend to make a follow-up video to this one, uh, detailing the behaviour of our politicians, media and police, who have all, all prostrated themselves before this... <laughs> How can I politely put it? Somewhat unsavoury organisation called Black Lives Matter. I will also make a video asking if all Black Lives Matter to the leadership of Black Lives Matter, or just those which provide a means to exert extreme left political pressure on the West uh, with the intention of tearing it down. And on a final point, uh, some of you may have noticed my videos are being pulled by YouTube because the truth the truth is apparently a contravention of their community guidelines. I imagine this one will also be pulled as well. It will certainly be reported by the disgusting fascists who wish to silence truth 
morality and decency, uh, so I'll also provide a link to my BitChute channel below this video uh, in order that you may continue to listen to my broadcasts uh, in the event the 21st century's Silicon Valley version of the Gestapo, that Stasi, KGB, Securitate, call it what you will, uh, silence me. And more importantly, uh, silence the truth about genuine evil.